Live from Nassau in the Bahamas, it's theCUBE. Covering Polygon 18, brought to you by Polymath. Hello everyone, welcome. We're live here in the Bahamas. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of the crypto world, blockchain, Bitcoin, all kinds of tokens, token economics. I'm John Furrier with my co-host and co-founder of SiliconANGLE and the Cube, Dave Vellante. Um, we're here to cover the securitization of tokens as well as all the action in the ecosystem. What's going on with token economics? What is going on in the ICO world? Who's investing in what? Who are the players? That's our job this week. We're going to get it done for two days. Our first guest to help us kick it off is Bradley Rotter, crypto investor for five years, been in the, the securities, hedge funds, financing business over the years. Um, great perspective to kick off from an investor point of view. Um, what's going on? Bradley, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Good day. Good Thanks for coming on. Thanks for uh, being a guest analyst uh, to help us break down what's going on. Obviously, um, you've got a lot of investments. You've got portfolio companies, one which you wear the shirt on Rivets. Um, they got a, they've done a token sale around uh, cyber security. But as an investor in general, I mean, you're long on this game? Are you long on crypto? Are you doing deals? What, what, what's, what's going on? I've been uh, very long in crypto from, from a very early, early time, five years ago. I heard about crypto from a 15-year-old, which got my interest. I had been, uh, been in one, of the, one of the pioneers in an asset class that reminds me a lot of, of Bitcoin, and that was financial futures. Remember when those came out? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was controversial. People were saying it'll never work. Uh, I, was, I was thrown out of some of the finest banks in Chicago and New York trying to explain to those institutions how they could use financial futures to hedge interest rate risk. Kind of reminds me now of, of, of Bitcoin, but you can see the tide turning now, and it's in all the, all the headlines. Yeah. And I mean, we, we, Dave and I talk all, all the time about this, and that is, is that, I don't get your thoughts on this, and get your reaction. You're seeing startups, really startups doing uh, token raises and ICOs, initial coin offerings, um, and they need to grow. They got to build their product and there's a roadmap. Then you got the uh, companies that are pivoting. Hey, let's just reboot with crypto and raise a bunch of cash and hope for the best. And then you got businesses that are growing yeah. that really are aligned with token economics. Most of the investors we talk to say, that's where the action is. That, okay, if they're going to be startup, then go with a hedge fund and that's more nurturing, a lot more of a classic you know, venture capital backed investment, but it's the growth companies that they're, that they're looking for. Yes. Do you see it that way too? And what's your reaction to that? I think, I think the issuance of tokens as securities is, is, is going to be a pretty big deal. Um, and it's and primarily, what I'm, what I'm extremely interested in is using tokenization for infrastructure, for gigantic projects. Um, it, it hasn't happened yet, but I think I, I, think I have ideas on, on how very large projects could be, could be tokenized, and that gives some real, some real advantages to the individual investor. You mean like, what, what big projects, smart cities? Um, give us some examples. Um, well, this is, my favorite example is that someday you'll be able to buy, you'll be able to buy a three mile stretch of a, toll, of a toll road in Texas, and as the owner of that three mile stretch, you'll, you'll get 25 cents a car credited every minute of the cars that, that are going down your stretch of toll road. You see what I'm saying? If you tokenize that infrastructure, you could then, it makes it, it, makes it more available to individual investors, but if you tokenize it, you could, you could borrow against your token your shares if you will you could uh, you could hypothecate it borrow against it um, the tax credits for those for infrastructure investment could be tied to the token itself and vary depending on on the uh, on the need for that particular infrastructure project and I think this this administration more than any I've ever seen you know is going to be very open to those kinds of ideas and I think it's yeah. Transformation. So that is transformational, being able to address our infrastructure problems with blockchain. <laughs> right? It's, That's it, your vision. Exactly. 
So I want to get, Dave, your reaction. You were just in the keynote. We're here at the Polycon 18. It's put on by Polymath and Grit Capital, uh, two Canadian uh, organizations, but you know, bringing kind of the world together. You were in the keynote. Um, they're selling a security token platform so people can get raised money with security tokens, which is really good because you know, there are SEC regulations in the US. It's a lot cleaner than the utility token. And for folks who want to learn more, go to YouTube, watch some of the videos that we've done on ICO 101. But Dave, what, what did you see in there? And then um, Bradley, going to get your thoughts on how you see it. So well, Dave, a couple what, things. Summary. Um, one is, and now it's biased, but the consensus in, in that audience was that security tokens are going to dwarf the value of utility tokens yeah. uh, over time, like massive dwarfing. Uh, number one. Number two is you're seeing a real mix of companies that are tokenizing their business. New companies, companies trying to solve problems in this new internet we're building out, existing companies that are looking to transform and, and have a logical reason to tokenize their business. So there's a lot of diversity going on. Your perspective as an investor, security tokenization is opportunity for businesses to use and raise money and use capital. I mean, you got to secure something. I mean, security yeah. token. Yeah. Is, well, this, this market has been so hot that, that, that investors have swayed a little bit from, from their, their typical diligence and, and so forth. I think many, they'll, they'll soon start to realize by buying these utility tokens, in many cases, there's not much utility. In fact, you know, I ask everybody I see, have you used a utility token today? <laughs> no, one, no one's really using utility tokens now. Right. And so, We've got to keep that in mind. The cart's a little bit in front of the horse. Yeah, yeah. Will we use them? You know, I, I believe so, but we're going to have to make it really easy, yeah. really easy to use. Do we, do we need 2,000 tokens? I don't think so. It's going yeah. to be complicated. So what do you look for as an, as an investor, uh, as a reasonable profile or an attractive profile? Is, is it ec equity in the company? Is it a rev share? Is it the utility of the... The I, have, I have done both. My first, my first utility token was uh, a company called MadeSafe. And I heard about MadeSafe from a 14-year-old Bitcoin miner. I always listen to 14-year-olds also. <laughs> uh, this young man said, uh, this young man had approached me after I was giving a, a, a speech on cryptocurrency. Uh, we, went out for a, we went out for a drink, in this case Diet Coke. And he told me about this company called MadeSafe. I went home and started looking at it. I was up till 4.30 in the morning, and a week later I was climbing on a plane to Troon, Scotland to go meet the developers. What was MadeSafe? What caught my eye? MadeSafe was a distributed, decentralized, peer-to-peer, self-authenticating, self-managed network that runs on math and logic. All the data is encrypted, sharded, sent around to the nodes around the world, and then the map of where those shards go is then encrypted again. It's NSA proof. Beautiful. Dave, you brought this up the other day and we talked about it at the pool. We did a segment on a kickoff about this event. We've been talking about digital transformation vis-a-vis -vis some of the old guard companies, either central authorities and or incumbent laggards or leaders. This token economics is part of the digital transformation that a lot of people aren't seeing. Yeah. Right, so you know, you say you've been kicked out of many banks, you still got these crazy ideas that are actually the ones that might actually be the best, and we think they are. Your thoughts, Steve, as you look at you know, the digital transformation, oh, you got to have a digital business, you need to use the power of data, data's a new oil, you know, cloud computing. Now you got this new variable coming in. Well, Decentralized, I, distributed uh, data. What's your thoughts? I mean, I, I see, you know, we talk, in the Cube, we talk about you know, SaaS and cloud and mobile and social and big data. That's yesterday, that's yesterday's news. To me, the future is you know, machine intelligence. It certainly starts with data and, and, and it starts with, uh, in, a, in crypto, blockchain plays a key part of building out that next wave of, of technology. And, and, I, and I see every industry being disrupted at different paces as a function of maybe the risk within that industry. Yeah. You've certainly seen it in publishing, <laughs> media, uh, music. You really haven't seen it yet in banking, yeah. healthcare, but these are the industries that need the most yeah. transformation. What, yeah. what are your thoughts, Brad? Well, the, the, the banks better be paying attention to this. I think if, I, if we're right about the cryptocurrency, 
banks will become as plentiful and as useful as blockbuster video stores. Yeah. I mean, I got to tell you, my, in, my, in, my, in my experience, the, 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 the old guard, is gonna, the disruption is going to come really fast, I think. And my prediction is that, and again, this is based on my history in the computer industry, is if you look at the billion dollar ideas, they're the dumbest ideas at first. Yeah. I mean, you go down the line, Google. We don't need another search engine, we want portals. Um, keyword navigation, the one I did. No, who would ever pay for a link on a search result? That's the dumbest idea. Um, I have Airbnb, you're going to sell all your home. That's the dumbest idea I ever heard of. The dumbest mm. ideas actually might be the best, if you look at it. And, and when I say dumbest, it might be ones that don't make sense. Yeah. Like you mentioned that one about Scotland. That technically makes sense, I get that. But someone in the mainstream would go, huh, what? I got to do all this stuff, it's just, so it's kind of what's going on right now, isn't it? And if there's, if there's any fabric that, that connects all of those different ecospheres that you were talking about, I think it's going to be cybersecurity is extremely important. It's not, not generally discussed at these kind of events, but I view, I view this just as much as a cybersecurity play as I do a digital currency play. The, and let me expand on that. The, the most valuable data in the world used to be in the Pentagon. No longer. Two reasons, basically. One, <laughs> if they've been hacked, <laughs> all the data, all the data is already gone. But two, if you steal the plans for the next generation F-39 Joint Strike Force fighter, good for you. There's only two buyers for that. I believe. The most valuable data in the world right now is a Bitcoin private key, and people are coming for them. Members of the, of the Bitcoin community are being hunted, singled out and hunted to try to get their Bitcoins. It's yeah. a, it's a so really yeah. interesting and phenomenon. I like that term you use, fabric, because we kind of envision this fabric emerging where you've got industries which are sort of vertical sliced, and then you've got these horizontal technologies, whether it's cloud, security, there's a data layer, uh, and, and people are building businesses on, on top of them, and then obviously tokenizing those businesses. We talked last night a little bit, and you guys are networking guys. You understand the challenges of distributed apps, distributed database, the latency challenges. You're, you're a little bit bearish on the market right now. Is it because of those technical challenges? Is it because there's so much bubblicious you know, attitude going on? What are your thoughts? I've been a little bit, uh, a little bit bearish on Bitcoin for the very short run. And, it, and of course, it's, uh, it's been in the headlines. At, at year end, it was, it was it, the front headline in every, every journal you read. The reason I've been a little bit negative is that it's purely for a tax perspective. And these, and, and, and let me explain why. These, these millennials that I collect, and I, I keep them around me just to, just to, to guide me and, and, and give me a, a glimpse of the future. Most of the, most of the people at this conference believe that when they buy Bitcoin and sell it and buy Ethereum and sell Ethereum and buy Cardano, that those are all like-kind exchanges and no tax will be due until they ever come back into fiat dollars. They're absolutely incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. And so... So they're exposed. They're really exposed. That's why I believe cryptocurrencies in general, Bitcoin specifically, have been very weak this year and probably will remain weak until April 16th. People are getting their tax bill, which is difficult to calculate with thousands of transactions in some cases. They're getting their tax bill and they're gonna, they're gonna have to sell some of their crypto holdings to pay Uncle Sam. It's a US phenomenon, but... But it, it's like people who exercise their options in you know, 2000. Exactly. And, hel and held on to the, to the shares and then got, got crushed. The All tax right. liability is fixed at December 31, but now the value yeah. of their collateral has gone down. It's a problem. Bradley, thanks for coming on, kicking off the show with us. Great good. to get your, your vision on investing. Dave, good to hear the, the keynote. More live coverage coming here from Polycon 18. The stampede is on. This is the show around security tokens in the Bahamas, the Cube. We'll be right back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>